My name's Jeff Burns, and I'm one of those. I'm garage people. Everyone has a happy place, a place they go where all the worries fade away. My happy place is my garage. Mr. Toastmaster, Toastmasters, most welcome guests. It all started when I was just five years old. I wanted to hang out with my dad. And he was a mechanical engineer at IBM during the day, and he was a garage mechanic by night. There was no such thing as really hanging out with my dad. If I was to go into that garage, he'd put me to work. And at five years old, being a little bit shorter than my dad, <laughs> he would be, put me right to work doing body work. He'd give me wet sandpaper and touching up imperfections on this used car that he would buy. Giving me instructions, destructions, <laughs> rotate that sandpaper, keep it wet, keep it wet. Circles, not strokes. And, oh, all these directions. But he would fix up the engine, touch up the small imperfections, have it painted, and then he would flip it. And with the money he would gain, he would buy another used car. And the process would start all over again. I was always impressed with my dad. I'll never forget that time when he picked an engine up by himself out of a car. Granted, it was just a Volkswagen engine, air-cooled, but smart. <laughs> but I was impressed, nevertheless. I wanted to be like my dad. Through the years, I've become, I've become somewhat of a garage connoisseur. Now, a good garage has that old fridge in the corner with cold beverages. <laughs> Maybe an old stereo playing music. And possibly a TV watching sports, maybe even fishing shows. <laughs> Once again, this is my happy place. Now, 36 years ago, I married a wonderful woman. And we made our one-year, three-year, five-year, ten-year plan. And that first-year plan was to buy another garage. <laughs> we bought a beautiful garage in the Mississippi River down by Wabasha. Three stalls, perfect place for that fridge, TV, stereo. We even put a telephone in there, just in case I had to call in sick the Monday. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. <laughs> it was a great garage. Now, as our family progressed and as we met our different goals, you know, came that five-year plan and then kids came along. We camped in that garage. It was awesome. We'd bring water down. The kids had a blast and they became garage people. We would walk around the neighborhood and there's a rather affluent group just down the road. And across the street, they would have garages. And I had my eye on one particular garage, very similar to the one we had. Now, this garage met all of the categories. It also had a garden in the back. And we talked with this older couple, and they were so nice. They would give us green beans, different produce from the garden. I mentioned to her, if you ever wanted to sell this garage, please, please let me know. Years passed, and we kept conversations with them, talking about their produce, the garage, and how I admired it. Then that day came, and she says, you know, I would really like you to have our garage. I guess we will sell that garage. Oh, another great garage. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I needed that extra space for some of my boat collection and a few other things. <laughs> we made out a contract. We went and saw the banker and then I, I talked to her. I said, now, just to make sure, could you please talk to your daughter and family? We just want to make sure everything's on the up and up. We took everything to the lawyer. We agreed on a price. And then time went by and we never heard back. We're going, what's going on? We talked to her again and suddenly, for some reason, we became bad people. The rumor in the neighborhood was that somebody more affluent bought this garage rather than us. 
I was heartbroken, and I thought, who is this person? And I found out his name. I Googled his name, and when you reach a level, a very high level, not only do you have information on this, on you, they have how much stock they own in a company. And when they trade, and there it was, he had sold exactly amount of what he paid for the property, a couple thousand more than what our offer was. Now, I've never had to go to court before, but this had me a little bit outraged. Not only were they calling us bad people for no reason, they sold it to this other neighbor with so much money I could never compete. I, talk, I talked to a lawyer wondering what to do, and he said, for $100 for an hour, he gave me a little a bit of a consult. He says, you have a great case, Jeff. If you give me $3,000, we'll get right on it. <laughs> I started thinking more and more about this. We had talked, my wife and I, about our 10-year plan of possibly moving down to this area. But then I started thinking, these aren't maybe the nicest people. Maybe we don't want to gravitate down there. I had the feeling that these weren't garage people. I decided to take a small claims court just to get our closing costs and kind of just wash my hands of it. I filed it in a small town of Wabasha. And then it happened. I received a certified letter. Judge Judy wanted me to explain or take our case to beautiful Burbank, California. <laughs> <laughs> Pay our flights, three days lodging, and $300 walking around money. I would have the chance to spar with the very McCrabe, McCrabe, nah. <laughs> Judge Judy. My family is all excited. My wife's like, you get to speak. <laughs> I was a Toastmaster. <laughs> to spar with Judge Judy. Oh, the blood was flowing. Once again, I started thinking about this. And even if I brought this in front of the national audience, even if I won, would I really win? Once again, I would have property by not so nice people. And they're not garage people. We settled out of court. I've got all my money back. And to this day, my son just kind of kicks me. Why didn't you take it to the limit? I explained to him, even if I won, I would have lost. I'm finalizing the plans of my next garage. I have plans for that perfect fridge and a kitchen, a garden. <laughs> Heated floors, a lift. Next year, if everything works out right, I will have a garage mahal. <laughs> <laughs>